Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today is a very important video. We're gonna take a deep dive into what flow profiling means and what the relationship between flow and pressure actually is. Might sound boring, but I promise you this is going to absolutely inform you in how you're making your espresso and how you come to understand espresso extraction. We're gonna go back to the late 1800s where Moriondo patented the first espresso machine. It was just at steam pressure around one and a half bar, similar to that of a mocha pot. And it just came out as like a bigger beverage that was bitter and harsh and not very good. You had a lot of innovations until you have the, the Cremonese Spring Group patent. Now this was given to his wife when he passed away. She sold it to Achille Gaja and he ended up creating the Lever Group in 1947. The Lever Group was the first machine to ever create nine bar of pressure by pulling down on a loaded spring, and then when it goes up, that spring rated at 10 or 11 bar would create on the puck an observed pressure of around nine bar, giving us that crema, that cream layer on top. That was the first ever of its kind. This espresso was created under that intense pressure, but as the lever would raise and that spring would decompress, the pressure would go down, and therefore the flow would decrease. He got it right essentially on the first try, but over the years, we've kind of gone back from that. Why is that the right way? So let's first look at where I think it kind of went the wrong way. It happens in 1961 with the famous E61. You had a semi-automated espresso machine where baristas could put it in and hit go and it would pump at nine bar to give you your espresso with that nice creme on top. Whereas it did help automate and streamline coffee, it actually negated some of that quality of that original espresso. You had just a nine bar shot. We need to understand why that flat nine bar shot is not necessarily optimal. Pressure is simply the product of input flow, so that whatever flow is going through a medium, times the resistance of said medium. So obviously the resistance will be the grind size and the packed, the density of the puck inside our portafilter, as well as its solubility, et cetera, et cetera. And then the input flow is the water that's being fed into that medium. To have an easy demonstration of this is if you were to put French press grounds into a portafilter, the value of your resistance or the R of that equation would be very low. So you would need an incredibly high input flow in order to achieve nine bar. Now on any espresso machine, you're never gonna hit nine bar with that course of grounds or that low of resistance. If you put in really finely ground coffee to the point where it's like Turkish grounds, then the flow rate needs to be super low in order to hit nine bar. So if you were to put a normal machine's water feeding into that puck and you didn't have some sort of restraining element on the pressure, the pressure would go through the roof. But thankfully on a lot of machines, we have what's called an OPV or an overpressure valve, and that disallows the, the machine from experiencing pressure higher than whatever that set value is. Now in most machines, that is at nine bar. Why is flow so important? Do we even really understand flow? What, what is this all about? What it's all really about is making sure we get in the zone. Zone that we wanna get in when we're creating espresso, and it's kind of shaped like a square. In this space, we have a square, Squarespace, which brings us to today's sponsor. Squarespace is an awesome resource for those of you who might be hobbyists or might be creatives or might be entrepreneurs where you can set up a website in order to launch your own personal branding. Now, I have used Squarespace ever since I started a shop in Memphis back eight or so years ago, and I still use one today for my own personal website. Now, Squarespace makes it very easy for those of you that may not be as savvy like me. They have all these different creative templates to choose from, and you can just set up a shop in there. Do, 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 do. Made some money, cha-ching. Well, what you do is very simple. Go to that link down below in the caption. You'll see it there, www.squarespace.com slash Lance Hedrick. Click on that and you'll get 10% off your subscription to Squarespace. Use that link, traces to me, helps the channel, helps everyone. Let's get back to that Squarespace of espresso. Now today I'm using the Lilite Bianca, which has a rotary pump inside. With my valve fully open, it is giving me a constant 6.5 grams per second of water. It's going to be delivering water at that rate to the coffee until it can no longer give that rate because it's reached nine bar. The OPV in this machine is set to nine bar. The pump is capable of going over nine bar, but we have an OPV that disallows it from exceeding that nine bar. Once the pressure kicks in and we see some drips coming out, essentially that input flow is no longer 
what we know it is, which is 6.5 grams a second. It is now whatever the flow needs to be in order to stay at nine bar or below. And we don't know what the input flow is anymore. Now there are flow meters on the market that try to understand or to give you a number for what the input flow is. None of them are actually giving you what is going into the puck. Then you also have something like the decent espresso machine that configures that flow rate based off of an algorithm, but that is also not perfect. As we start getting a steady stream out of the porta filter, the output flow we can surmise essentially equals what the input flow is. Now the input flow is probably just a little bit higher as it's going through that puck and it kind of gets caught, etc. Output flow is almost equaling what the input flow is. We can measure and know what is called water debit. Water debit is just whatever that water speed is coming out of the group head unperturbed by a porta filter. So if I were to turn this on, I can measure the per second of this by two ways. I could put a cup under there with a scale and measure how many grams of water come into the cup within 10 seconds, or I can connect a Bluetooth scale to an app and I can measure it a lot more uh, accurately and see what it is once it levels out and we can negate the noise. What I'm gonna do now is pull a nine bar flat shot. I'm gonna be tracing this using the press sensor app. At the beginning, the flow is gonna be all the way at six and a half grams. Then it's going to be filling the space between the top of the puck and essentially where it connects to the machine. That dead space needs to be negated in order for the pressure to kick on. Well, essentially you need to create a connection from the medium to the pump. There is no connection as long as there is that dead space in between. So the water showers over the puck and it starts to build up above the puck, build up slowly, slowly, slowly. And then once all that dead space is gone, you essentially have created that connection from the medium to the pump. And then it can actually begin to feel the pressure of the pump. So obviously whenever I just open up the valve right now, it's just sprinkling water. That's not creating our espresso. What creates our espresso is once this whole empty space is filled with water and then it creates that connection, finishes the connection between the two and pressure can be applied. Once the pressure kicks in, the water will immediately go down, saturate the full puck, cascade at the bottom, and then it will start slowly coming out with those heavy viscous shots. Then what we'll see with the flow on that graph is the flow is going to dip down to whatever essentially is that output weight. So it's important important to know that it will be coming out at that full flow, 6.5 grams a second, until it's pressurized. Then it's going to slow down immediately, and the first time we see the, the flow on this app is going to be when the drops come out, because I'm measuring the flow with the scale. Then as time goes on and that puck is disintegrating, the pump's job is to maintain 9 bar, but it's only allowed 6.5 grams a second. So that means if the resistance drops, remember it's the product of resistance times flow, if the resistance distance drops below a certain product that multiplied by six and a half gets us nine bar of pressure, if the flow drops below that, the pressure is going to start to descend because that resistance is going to continue to drop. Once we top out flow, there's no going over it. There's also something to take into account, which is called inherent puck to integrity. You could run however long you wanted water through this puck. Never will this fully disintegrate. So there is always going to be some puck integrity inside. This is not an unlimited decreasing resistance. There is an inherent puck resistance that will be there. So there is a certain amount that that R can go down and for flow there's only a certain amount that the flow can go up. So there is only a little area where the pressure can kind of live once you're dialed in. This is going to vary from puck to puck but we'll talk about that more in a second. So of course at the beginning we see nothing on the graph because it's filling up that headspace but now pressure starts to kick in and there we go. We have a ramp up and it only tops out at about 7.7 .7 bar of pressure, 7.8, and that's because I have a really lightly roasted coffee in here that's not, uh, that's not um, uh, ground finely enough. So it's trying to maintain that 8 bar and it seems that we have peaked out at our flow rate which is about 3.4 grams per second. This is as fast as the water can go through. It can't go any faster through that puck because of the puck resistance, it's not able to hit more than eight bar of pressure. So if we were to keep the shot going, we would actually see the pressure decline, decline just very slightly, if at all, but essentially what we've hit right there is that inherent puck integrity. It's not gonna be able to drop much further than where it was at, and that's because we have pulled out just as many solubles as we really can. Now, of course, there may be a little bit to get out, but my theory is once we're at full flow, the, as the most that can go out, and the pressure has stopped dipping, that means that we're done extracting whatever solubles 
holes are in there. So if you're at a max flow rate and you're no longer dipping on pressure, that means the puck integrity is staying the same. If it was still disintegrating, we would see a, a decrease in the pressure as that, as that uh, flow rate stays the same. So I think most of those solubles have been extracted at the point whenever we have topped out flow, bottomed out pressure, we're just staying constant, which means that that medium is at its final phase. Maybe we can drop the pressure a little bit, showing that we're getting a little bit extra out of that puck, but for the most part, the majority of those solubles are gone at that point. Now, when we look at this screen recording, what you can see is kind of obvious. You have a peak of pressure, and that's because the resistance wasn't high enough with the flow rate given by the machine to hit nine bar. This can actually go up to about nine and a half bar if you have a finely enough ground coffee in there with a high enough puck integrity. What I mean by puck integrity is just the capability of the puck to give resistance, adequate resistance. So as you see on there, it goes up just shy of eight and it actually slowly increases through the shot. Now, part of the reason for that is likely due to fines migration. The fines go down and kind of, can kind of slow the, the, the flow of the water through the puck up a bit. So this can actually explain that small increase even though the flow rate is decreasing ever so slightly on the output flow. So as that it's decreasing a bit, that's probably showing us the fines migration through the puck, which is clogging the bottom of it, disallowing as much flow to come out. So it's very interesting to look at these graphs and to kind of surmise what is going on in the puck because for so long we just had no idea of what was actually going on. You have that inherent puck integrity and we won't really be able with this coffee in this dialing to get over that 3.5 grams per second. But once we're done with the shot and we pull through again and we see what happens, you're gonna see higher than 3.5 grams per second. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is to demonstrate how important it is to understand that if you turn your machine off and you actuate your solenoid valve, you are unseating your puck. Unseating the puck is no joke and you'll get some heavy bypass. So immediately we're at 6.6 .6 grams per second. And it's because it's fully bypassing that puck. And it's because we unseated the puck. If I were to have continued running the shot earlier, we would have never gone over 3.5 grams a second. So on any machine that isn't maybe piston driven or something like that, you are going to have the puck unseat. But if you turn your machine off, if you're trying to emulate a blooming style shot, if you have a machine that turns off and that solenoid's enacted, you will unseat the puck and you'll have a, a bad shot. If you want to do a blooming style shot, you need a machine that will not actuate the solenoid or whatever uh, system you have in your machine machine to, uh, to stop the flow. With this, I have a needle valve where I can turn off that water and then reactuate it. That is a much better option than turning off the machine itself because then you're just going to have full edge channeling. Having control of flow rate, I think, is a really critical thing in order to really improve your espresso. Now, what this one does is it's a typical E61 style group head, and at the top, there's a 0.6 millimeter aperture in this mushroom cap called a jiggler, where the water goes through this thermosiphon, comes up through the group head, and then down through this tiny aperture to slow down the water flow in order to hit that 6.5 grams per second. Now, what this little valve does here is it's a little needle that goes into that 0.6 millimeter aperture, and as you move or toggle this flap here, it is lowering and raising the needle, turning down the flow and turning up the flow, is it allows me to have a fast fill rate, which I think is of paramount importance for an evenness in extraction. Now, I know there are trendy styles of shots that have a low flow, but that is the worst thing you can do to your espresso. And I'm being very opinionated on this because I can prove it to you. I've measured the water debit on this machine. When it's full flow, as you saw, it's about 6.5 grams a second. When it's half, it's around 3.2 grams a second. When I go between half and off, it's around you know just shy of two grams per second. Well known styles of shots is to do a low flow fill. I'm going to show you why this is an issue. I'm not saying you can't get good espresso based off of this, but I am saying objectively you will not get good consistency and you definitely will not get an even extraction or optimizing your evenness of extraction when you do a low flow puck saturation. I'm going to show you why the fastest fill possible is ideal and why lever machines had it right from the beginning when they had those 50 milliliter a second fill rates with steam and pre-infusion. I'm starting it. We're at five seconds, seven seconds, and now you're gonna see what the issue is. The bottom part of that puck is completely dry. So as you saw, within four or five seconds of the high fill, we had drops coming out, which means that whole puck was saturated. This one, in 10 seconds, we didn't even touch the bottom part of that coffee. It's only wet for the first few millimeters 
That's how much of the puck was wetted. You see that depth? The bottom three-fourths of that puck hasn't even gotten wetted yet. The slower the water goes through, the more potential there is for channels or potential issues in your puck preparation to be exposed by the creeping water going down. If we can quickly saturate the puck and expand the puck, we can potentially help negate some of those puck preparation issues. So I actually don't like the term pre-infusion because it doesn't really mean much. I prefer the term saturation rate. It's important to go as quickly as possible, which again is why I love of lever machines. You pull that lever up and steam pressure is throwing it out there at like 50 grams a second and it's going to saturate and fill that area above the puck within half a second. Once that area is filled, pressure can be kicked in immediately. You can saturate that puck. Once that puck is saturated, you can cease the flow if you'd like on a machine like this. I'll leave it fully open. We're gonna go at six and a half grams a second, and then I can shut the flow off if I want it to like pre-infuse or to off gas or to bloom. And then I can open it back up so that it will go up to pressure. So we're going, we're going, I see coffee, so I shunt the flow. And there are some drips going. It only took, you know, four seconds or so to see some drops, three seconds maybe. And the shit flow is completely off. There are drips because there's still pressure going through, dissipating, as you see that pressure curve dipping. But now we've kind of bottomed out. We're at about 20 seconds. I'll go to 30 and I'll reintroduce the flow for like a sort of blooming style of espresso. So here we go. I'm gonna just reintroduce flow back to Let's go to, actually we'll go, there we go, right about here, three grams a second or so. So as you can see, even when I open it up this much, it's not able to hit nine bar. If we open it up all the way, it tops out at six. Oh, we went up, it went up to set almost seven. When I open it up all the way, it went all the way to almost seven. Does you see those flow rates, how they differ? Now, let's discuss that really quickly. When I do the blooming, it's allowing the puck to be saturated heavily before I really start to push any flow through it. Water's going into those grounds. It's creating a high pressure inside the grounds so that diffusion begins to occur. It's pulling things outside of those grounds, ready to be pushed through. Because I allowed that 30 second blooming, we had a much lower puck integrity. So I went all the way to that fastest flow near the end. And as you saw, I could only get to seven bar. But again, if I pulled this same exact shot, 19 grams of the same ground coffee, we could easily hit nine bar without that blooming phase. So you need to really understand this idea of reducing the puck integrity, of increasing your extraction, and essentially what the puck integrity is doing to the extraction as a whole. We went up to about five bar because it doesn't need a full nine in order to fully saturate. It saturates right when that pressure kicks in. It's going through, even at like two bar, it's going through that whole puck, no problem. But once we see it cascading on the bottom, it's a little past full saturation, obviously. So I do it with that visual cue because I don't really know in the puck saturated without the visual cue. But then I shut the needle valve off, I turn it off completely, and the pressure begins to dissipate as you see on that graph. Then I reintroduce flow up to two, a two and a half, three, three and a half or so grams per second, and we see that pressure does go up, but it doesn't have the same potential as before because the resistance in our equation, pressure equals flow times resistance, is much lower. So even though we cap out the flow, the resistance is too low to hit nine bar. If we had the capability of going to 15 grams a second with this machine, we could have hit nine bar again. And that is the issue with machines that are flat nine bar. The puck was obviously very much brittle and it was very, very weak. If we had a typical rotary machine like in a cafe environment or most rotary machines like a Linea Mini or something like that, that expends 11, 12, 13 grams per second at its water debit, then at the end there, when the puck was really brittle and was telling us, yo, we don't have anything to give, those machines would be going faster and faster and faster to maintain that nine bar. This doesn't have nine bar to give under the circumstances. But if you put enough flow behind it, it will. The more flow, the more potential for channels, the more potential for heterogeneous extraction. We're never gonna have homogeneous extraction. The whole point of espresso is fighting for the most homogeneity we can get. Grounds are not perfect, your tamping is not perfect, your distribution is not perfect, the water distribution is not perfect. You're fighting against a lot of variables to get a perfectly homogeneous extraction. However the grounds are filled up into your portafilter, it will be exposed the more and more flow 
flow you put through it. We can lessen the effects of that negativity near the end of the extraction when our puck is really weak by simply lessening the flow, tapering off the flow instead of increasing it. Of course, anything manual is going to be introducing a lot of other variables as well, so I'm not saying it's the answer to all of our woes. On a typical espresso extraction, we're getting around 20% of extraction. That means literally, right now, of the original dose I put in here, I have 80% left of it. 20% is now in this cup of coffee. So let's imagine we have a 20 gram putt that's perfectly dialed. At the end of that shot, you don't have 20 grams anymore. You have roughly 16 if you have a 20% extraction. You took that same exact grind size that you made for the 20 gram dose, put 16 grams in instead, pull the same shot. It's gonna be channeling everywhere, spurting all over the place. It's gonna be messy. It's not gonna hit nine bar. Not exactly, but that's almost what's happening at the end of your extraction with a 20 gram puck. Being able to manipulate the flow rate and the pressure, we're able to save shots. Let's say that we have two course of an espresso grind. We start the shot and we see immediately it's going faster than we're used to. We can slow down the shot by going really low flow for the rest of the extraction, and we might be able to save it by pulling a 50 second shot at a really low pressure. Or we see that it's really tight and we're at full flow and it's taking forever to saturate. Maybe we just boom, turn the flow off, we allow it to bloom. You need really fine grinds for blooming shots. Maybe you save the shot that way. I'm gonna just do a, what's called a rail allonge. That is setting the water debit to four grams per second and letting it run for a one to five ratio. You're gonna have a peak in pressure because it's gonna fill the it's gonna fill the empty space, it's gonna immediately peak, and then it's gonna start to go down as that flow tries to get up to four grams per second. What this is gonna do is give us a really vibrant, sweet cup, and the idea is to get it in around 30 to 45 seconds. So it's filling up the, the dead space, obviously not as fast as we could be going, but pretty fast. And here we go, here goes the pressure, and off we are. Let's see, we'll peak our pressure at around six and a half bar, which is about right. You know, sometimes it's a little higher, maybe around eight. But with this coffee, this seems right, this feels good. We're up to about three grams a second of output. Hopefully that goes up just a smidge. But as you can see, the pressure's already starting to cascade down. And we're going for about a one to five ratio. I put 19 in, that means I'm wanting like 95 out or so. So here we go, almost there. And it'll be right at about 40 seconds. All right, we talked earlier in this video about puck integrity. A lot of things can contribute to that. The roast level contributes heavily to it. The darker the roast, the higher the puck integrity, roughly speaking. So when you have that really dark roast, really brittle beans, you're gonna grind it, produce a lot of fines, produce a lot of soluble uh, elements in there that's really gonna hold on to that water. That's why typically you'll find that you need to grind more coarsely for a given coffee that's darkly roasted than you would for a light. The lighter the coffee, the lower the puck integrity, the more gentle you need to be with it, essentially. Grinders, there are those that produce a ton of fines and those that produce very little fines. I'm gonna pull the same exact shot using my EK43 with Brewbers. What you'll see is a much faster declining pressure, even though I'm gonna dial it in to the same rough parameters. It'll be a completely different pressure profile and you're gonna see a massive difference between the two. Even though it's the same coffee, that var variable has a massive impact on what is going to happen during the extraction. We have it on the same exact flow position. Let's go ahead and start this shot. So on this one, we actually peaked really quickly at nine bar, but look at that decl declination of pressure. Look at that. We peaked really quickly at nine, but because there are so few fines in this, the pressure dipped all the way down to about five bar. So this Alange is gonna be a completely different experience to the previous one. The time is gonna be very similar. The other one was at 41, this will be at 30. Eight, 38 seconds. Honestly, that's difficult to describe or explain. I would have assumed that the other one would have, would have had a higher peak due to the higher puck integrity. But this one went all the way up to nine bar and then quickly shot down immediately, down to about five and a half bar of pressure. What's interesting with these two shots is you can see very clearly the heavy difference between the particle distributions. With the one ground on the RE Zimex Cool, the 83 millimeter cones, you see a lower peak of pressure and maintaining that pressure, which shows a more wide varied bimodal distribution in the coffee grounds. It has a higher puck resistance over the long run, but doesn't have the same peak pressure because of the coarser grounds inside the puck itself. 
whereas on the EK43 with SSP Brewbers, we see an immediate peak of pressure that's much higher, and that's because we had to grind a lot finer. So the peak was higher, but it wasn't able to maintain that pressure because it rapidly loses TDS and it rapidly loses CO2, which is both going to affect the pressure. So as you see, there's a massive difference between these two shots, even though it's the same exact coffee and same parameters. Because they necessitated different grind sizes and had different dissolution rates, we see two completely different graphs. Now we have these two side by side. We have to taste these really quickly. That has a nice fruit bomb, but there's definitely a biting there's like a, the aftertaste isn't great. It's a little astringent. Um, this coffee should not be extracted that highly with this burr set. Um, that's not super great. This is much more flavorful. Still a bit weak. I would probably want to lower uh, lower the output a bit because there's kind of a dryness on the end, but it doesn't have the astringency that this one has. Whenever we see blanket statements of, this is the right time for an espresso shot, this is the right recipe for the espresso shot, this is the right pressure, the right this, the right this, throw it out the window, it doesn't help us at all. What we need to do is understand the relationship of pressure, we need to understand the relationship of that between resistance and flow, and we need to understand that our goal is to have as a most a homogeneous extraction as possible. These both probably would have tasted a lot better had I, at the end, tapered down flow, because, as that puck is weakening, any of those areas of lower concentration are gonna be exposed by that fast flow rate. And especially as it's decreasing, the flow rate will increase on the input because at the beginning, it's lower. There's no flow rate coming out, so it's very low flow rate after it's fully filled. And so as it continually increases, it's gonna expose some of those weaker areas in our puck prep. Make sure you check out my Patreon down below in the link. Not only do we have an awesome and robust Discord with about a thousand people in it, but we also I also do a lot of giveaways. I've given away two DF64s, about to do a DF83. Amara X will be coming, the Cheetah Print or Leopard Print, Ranchilio Silvia will be coming, the Niche Duo, and a thousand other things that I'll just be giving away that I have accumulated for this channel. Thank you so much. You all rock. I hope that you brew something tasty today and cheers.